Lefty. And Renly chuckles. Yeah. He laughs. Yeah, he tell, yeah. Oh, oh, Randall Tarly, he says, I would uh, warn you against fighting with this bitch because she's whack. <laughs> she's <laughs> that was not the quote. <laughs> Heyo! What up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Brotherhood Without Manners, your favorite full spoiler reread podcast of George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series. As always, I'm Nate, joined by my laughing brother, Zach. <laughs> what up? <laughs> you okay? Oh, shit. Yeah, no, I just didn't expect you to just jump into it like that. We like to read A Song of Ice and Fire here and talk about it. So if you haven't joined us before, we're full spoiler. We'll ruin everything for you. We're not going to right now just because that requires, you know. We'll find your social security and put it online. That, we won't ruin that. Oh. That's, we're not that spoiled. We're not that spoiled. Um, just but. related to the context. Yeah, of we'll the story. ruin a song of ice and fire. We'll, we, we, we like to talk about it all. Sort Everything of from yeah, Ned losing his head up to Fagon not having been killed up by to the mountain. Varys killing Kevin Lannister. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, that's a full spoiler. Yeah. Fucking. If you've joined us before, welcome back. Thank you for coming back. If you joined us last episode, we were reading Bran 3. Mira and Jojen got to Winterfell. There was a there was a party. They were having the feast for the harvest, and Bran was kind of presented like the little prince that he is. And he had a really nice moment of kind of feeling the the pride of the Stark family as he got to ride down and stand tall. Well, ride tall, but uh, then yeah, they they had the feast, and he was kind of over the feast. And then Mira and Jojen Reed arrived from Greywater Watch on behalf of their father, Howland Reed, who is Ned Stark's staunchest companion during Robert's Rebellion, and who apparently, according to Ned Stark himself, saved his life from Sir Arthur Dane. And so these two arrived, swore a interesting a very oath interesting that we hadn't oath. heard before, um, caught Bran off guard as well, and Bran welcomed them. Then he went to sleep. Had some wolf dreams. The wolves got to meet the the reeds as well, uh, uh, and it was very interesting. It and was fun noted to how powerful about. Bran seemingly is, yeah. and how angry Rickon or Shaggy Dog via Rickon is. Yeah. But this episode, we are switching over to Mama Stark. Mama Stark. And Mama Stark. Do 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 do. I fucking hate me. Do 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 do. The curse of having nephews. Do 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 do. Anyway. Yes, Catelyn, as we last left Catelyn in Catelyn 1, her first chapter, she was not dealing with the fallout, but dealing with the fact that Rob has been named King in the North. They are at River Run currently, where her father is dying. He, Lord Hostetully is not long for this world, and she's having a hard time with it. Uh, and, and I always kind of forget with Cat how much she actually is having to deal with, because she's having to deal with the death of her father, Reconcile the fa- that with the fact that her husband just recently was killed unjustly, Slamming. and now her son is leading a host to war as king, and so she's stressed to the maximum. She's worried about her daughter. She wants to try to strike some sort of peace if possible. Rob doesn't believe that's ever going to happen. It will make his position seem weak, right. as they already do seem weak because they've been sitting at River Run, kind of just stewing. And so we pick up this one where. Catelyn is dreaming. Yeah. And she's dreaming of her These children. Stark's in the dreams, man. Yeah, and hers seem to be just a parental just a dream. wish. Yeah. yeah. And so it's very much just her imagining her children as they used to be with uh, Arya and Sansa holding hands. Bran and... was whole again. That's yeah, a sad Bran one. is whole again. Rickon was still a babe at her breast, and Rob was crownless, playing with a wooden sword in the yard. And when they were all fast asleep, she found Ned waiting in her bed, smiling. Yeah, it's just, it's a pleasant, like. Yeah, take care of the kids. We had a great day with the kids. The kids were good. They went to bed, and then she gets there, and there's her loving husband. And nah, just kidding. Wake nah, up. Nah, just kidding. And but she... dawn came cruel, a dagger of light, and she woke aching and alone, weary of riding, weary of hurting, and just weary of. Yeah, she kind of just duty. wishes that she she just wants like an hour. Uh, you know, she goes through them a day, an hour. Where she doesn't have to be the one who's strong. She doesn't have to be the one worrying about everybody and carrying this weight on her shoulders. Um, that structure of duty. I mean, we saw the same thing with Bran. He wanted to 
cry when thinking yeah, how he did recognize but he's the anyone. Lord and he yeah. can't. And so she hears men stirring outside and she wants them all to go away. Yeah, just get the fuck out of here. Yeah, they're all good men, loyal, but it is her children she yearned for. And she said she decides that one day she will allow herself to be less than strong, but not today. It could not be today. Today depended on her strength. Yeah. Now, not for the first time or the last time will I be mentioning Tyrion's last chapter here, but I think it's important to note how accurate he was when he says Catelyn just wants her children back. Mm. That's all she's after at the moment. And that's exactly what we're getting right here. As soon as she wakes up, I just want my fucking kids. That's it. Yeah. So the- outside, uh, Shad was making breakfast, one of the, the men with her, and offers her some bird because there's some quail out in the, the bush brushes. Yeah. But she's like, no, just like whatever's the fastest, oats and grain, whatever the hell you're cooking in there. And uh, he does mention tea. And- well, it was... Uh- it was one of the Manderleys. It was Sir, like, Westall Manderley, who was offering to go hunt. He was all ready, like, let me go hunt you fresh. And she was, and Shad, who was a Winterfell man, was just making some, like, oats. Yeah. And he's like, would you like a cup of tea, my lady? And she's like, fuck it, please. Like, she's ready to go. And, and she notes that Shad was a Winterfell man. Rob had sent 20 of his best to see her safety to re- safely to Renly, as well as five lordlings whose names and high birth would add weight and honor to her mission. So... Rob put a lot of thought into who he sent yeah, with yeah. her. And, yeah, Shad is kind of a little more reasonable of, like, we're not out here, we're not here to, to yeah. have a glorious fucking hunting festival. We're here to get to Renly. Which and... is very important to note, that they are just having There's no oatmeal. showmanship like, yeah, to it, yeah. We have to go do this job. And she so. never wanted this, which she had told Rob, but he had insisted that there was no one else to send, and... He needs to be. He needs to march soon, so as not to look afraid to take the field against Tywin again, which is exactly what the rumor is against him. Yeah, because he threatens to to send Great John in her. Well, stand. he says like even my, a... he says even my Northmen grow restless. Yeah, and yeah. she's like even my Northmen like he's, she's thinking like a king. Well, yeah. she, so they did. I just want to mention she had they had passed certain uh, groups and stuff when they were traveling here to meet with Renly mm-hmm. armies, but they were they were too small to pose any real threat to them but they were too large of a for group for pickings, the easy yeah. pickings so they kind of skirted, skirted around middle, yeah. without any issues yeah no one accosted them on the way down and then as they got past the god's eye it was it's been they've seen it's no one nothing. like clearly yeah. the war hasn't descended past far. down by the god's eye yeah so like she, you said she she, she says that tywin wants rob to march on Heron hall she's like you're doing exactly what he wants and he's, he's like i right, never said yeah. anything about marching on Heron hall i but I did. We need to. We need to do something. And then he sends and says, "If you, well, if you're not going to go see Renly, I have to send the great job." Yeah. So this is the next point of bringing up Tyrion, um, with him saying, "We can't just sit here." Yeah. That he Tyrion's argument to Cersei was, "We can send all these these uh, missives back and forth to keep him sitting, keep there. them busy, just sitting and doing nothing while our army." Sir Stafford uh, is raises, building over at Casterly yeah, Rock yeah. grows, and Rob knows that that's what they're hoping mm-hmm. for, and is doing the exact opposite, which is completely. I mean, against yeah, inactivity expecting. during a war gives your enemy a chance to bolster their their defenses or their enforcements, whatever they need. So I just think it's important that. Rob is Rob isn't a, under, uh, they're yeah. underestimating Rob. Yeah, yeah. And, he's not oblivious to the fact that just sitting here is bad for his army. And she smiles at remembering this conversation and says that it was an obvious ploy, him saying he was going to send the Great John, uh, yet deft for a boy of 15. Rob knew that Great John Umber was the most ill-suited to treat with Renly and knew she knew it as well. And so kind of left her no choice. But still... She doesn't want to leave her father, who literally could die at any day now, and she was kind of hoping to be there for that. Yeah, but, and she goes and said her goodbye to yeah. him. He doesn't recognize her at all. I, like, her goodbye was pretty, like, brutal, yeah, where she was... kisses his brow and says, you have to wait for me now as I waited for you. Right. And, like, we know. Which we got from he, Game of Thrones know, when yeah. she first arrived. Wait or... for me, little cat. Yeah. He, he, she used to watch for him. I just, I think that's a really beautiful, like, and uh, actually, it's, it's funny. It's from some uh, special features of Lost. But one of the directors say um, about a particular scene that when you see a character with their parent, it really humanizes them. And this one, this scene with Kat and her father does a great job of that because 
you know, up until this point, it's kind of been like, all right, yeah, we get it. Your father's dying and you're upset. But now it's like there's been always this sort of wait for me thing yeah, with dynamic. her father. And she wants to be there for once for this big significant moment, which is his death, the last time she can spend with him. And so the sending off is very kind of full circle for her. And I just thought it was a really great moment. And Martin wrote it really, really well. But uh, she also had written to Brandon Rickon her last night at Winterfell, saying that I had not forgotten you, my bit, my sweets. It's just that your brother needs me more, which, now, I, goddamn. If I recall, she doesn't see him again, right, until he gets back with his new wife. Rob. Yeah. Correct. And so, what that also means, if that is correct. They don't see each other again. That uh, Brandon Ricken are supposedly dead next time that they see each other. Yeah. And so that might be one of the last letters that she sends to them. I think it is the last that, letter she sends them. So I just think it's neat to, you know, because being a reread, I've never really grasped, like, that could be the last the finality letter. finality of things, yeah. Yeah, that, that's it. That's the last one, and that's the last time they're going to see each other knowing that those two are alive ever. Yeah. But uh, Sir Wendell announces that Renly isn't far, though they, they'll get there relatively soon. She did not relish this meeting with Renly, they, but they needed friends, not enemies. But Rob would never bend the knee to a man he felt had no claim to the throne. But she's quick to mount up, yeah, and they set right leads off. The, the party out quick, and they're no more than a mile out from Renly's massive camp when they get surrounded by outriders led by sir colin of greenspool and she announces herself saying that she is envoy for king rob stark king in the north and uh this is where we learn that renly is for you map buffs renly is encamped near bitterbridge and sir colin will gladly escort them and catelyn thinks escort or captor but they don't really have a choice here so they ride forward, and Renly's camp, as you said, is fucking massive. Yeah, so they're escorting them through, and she's just taking in the whole scene. And there's a the, lot. It seems like taking... all the South is here. She yeah, knows. and it's a massive war camp. There's high siege gardens, engines and trebuchets. She sees high garden, stuff. House Florent, Fossaways, Green Apple, Red Apple, Lord Tarly, Lord Oakheart, Lord Crane, Cranes, and Mullendone, the Mullendones. Mullendones, uh, and then across the Mander, even more. Once yeah, they Renly's get there, true uh, Bannerman. Yeah. Storm's end. They see the Karens, Penrose, Estermonts, uh, plus a bunch more small lords and hedge knights that yeah. are all camped all over the place. And they approach this massive, huge, oaken, wheeled immensity. And I kind of thought of that carriage that Cersei was on yeah. when she came, but even larger. And essentially, it, it looks like it's just a, a fucking arena on wheels. Pretty much. Is what it is. And they've got the stands and... Yeah, they begin to hear cheering. And they realize, they see that a melee is in progress currently. And from the looks of the grounds, they had been at it for a day or two. And Sir Colin asks them to wait while he leads just Catelyn up to Runley. And so they cut through. And in the melee, she notes that the uh, Red Ronnet goes down to a big blue knight from Tarth. Na, 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 na. Yeah, now it's a reread. So Brienne is down yeah. there fighting. We she still doesn't know Brienne. yet that it's Brienne. She thinks it's giant man. And as both uh, the man and horse go down screaming in pain, Catelyn thinks this is madness. There are real men enemies on every side. Half the realm is in flames, and Renly sits here playing at war with a like a boy with his first wooden sword. And so as she's making her way through the crowd, being led by Sir Colin, she's marking well the lords and ladies that she sees in the gallery as well. Uh, a few having treated at River Run during her time as a girl there. And in their midst, watching and laughing with his young queen by his side, sat a ghost in a golden crown. I love The way that they that. say that is awesome. Because it, <clears throat> what he means by that is that it's fucking Robert Risen again. Yeah. Robert's, like, he is just... Well, I mean... When he was 20 years that's ago. That's what he means about it right now. R right. And it ha it, to me, it just carries so much weight. As as do a lot of things that are said about Renly in this chapter with his in, his upcoming death at the and, and the way it happens. It's super interesting. So, yeah, this whole... 
everything here because she it's not the the robert she saw at winterfell she sees the robert from 15 20 years ago when he was leading the battle against Rhaegar, yeah. like this tall, like, and I never really thought, I always, even now, kind of started to picture the show Renly. Yeah. But this one is, he he is a staunchy built, like, he's a yeah, he, strong, he's handsome, sturdy, broad shoulder. As handsome as Robert had ever been, and his circlet of gold with the two stags meeting in the front suited him well. It, it sat on his soft golden or not golden but it's soft black hair, hair yeah, yeah, yeah. and just really seemed to accentuate his frame yeah he's a Mar- renly's a good looking cat and his queen marjorie the young daughter of mace tyrell Loris, sat next to him hi garden their marriage was the whole mortar of the southern alliance catlin knew they were what's holding everything together and actually unlike the show it is renly who is crying out loris loris hi garden yeah which uh was it because i thought it was in in the book it said no, it is Renly. Oh, it no, is indeed Renly, it. yes, because I was all excited for my girl Marjorie doing it because I was going to do it, and then it, it was Renly. And I, I actually like it a little better because... No, it makes sense. We Well, works. like, that's the big, uh, the big exchange from the show to the book is, for some reason, the show felt it was absolutely implicitly exposed Wrestling. Yeah, well, he says Loris, but she says Loris Highgarden is how I see it. She heard him call, and then Loris Highgarden, the queen, clapped her hands well, together. Whatever. Yeah, sure. But either way. Um, you made me lose my train of thought. Difference in the show or some shit? Oh, like yeah, the, the, the difference in the show is that for some reason the show felt it was absolutely necessary to show us that Redley is gay. And in the books, it's so much Sorry. better done. Like, it's this, is he, isn't he? And, uh, like, it's just picking up on these little things, that Renly is initiating the cheering for Loris, that Loris is sitting at his right hand later during the dinner, right. that he's sharing more conversation at the dinner with Loris than he is Marjorie. Right. Like, and the rainbow, the rainbow cloak, the imagery, it's... Which isn't something that applies in their world. I, I just think it's be... so much better. No, that imagery is purely for us as the reader. Exactly. Is to be exactly. that association. And I just, I thought it was, it's so much better handled in the book because it doesn't need to be explicitly said. Those those scenes with Renly and Loris, you know, all the actors are great in the show, yeah, were just unnecessary. Yeah, they weren't was, needed. That was, to, that was like coddling the audience a little bit, which, I mean... Well, it's giving the viewer a point of view chapter that doesn't exist. Game of Thrones was such a smart show, especially for the first season, that I was surprised that they dumbed down that relationship a little bit because I thought the mystique of and never Laura- actually having Renly confirm it is one of the best parts of Renly because it to him it doesn't matter right. because it shouldn't matter because it's just who he is, but... To the realm that and the Loris greatly. in the book is significantly better. He than is Loris so much more of a badass in the book. Like, and that's you know the, the time constraints and all you know for certain storylines. Yeah, to be in, cut. The, in the show they kind of made Loris a little like a little bit stereotypically gay, which was totally unfair to the character because Loris is a badass here. Yeah. I mean, he, here he's going against this fucking crazy huge blue knight and he's doing well like him and Brienne are going at it Loris is so much more bad so I think the whole relationship of Renly Loris in the show as opposed to the books was trash like just trash it all because and actually kind of the whole representation of Renly yeah Renly absolutely in the book, he does pr- like because you gave me and will always give me and will probably give me right now more shit about the fact that Renly at least comes off as he would appear to be a good king I still stand strong that he wouldn't make a bad king because he, looking at, I, again, and it's always putting on the little stipulations yeah, yeah, yeah. of like during war versus not during war. And he's sitting here obviously not prepared for what's coming in the extremes. He does rule the people prop Like he interacts with the people on a, a good level, but whether they're a high Lord or a servant, he treats them all the same. He, I, granted, I think that only goes surface I mean, level. Danny treats her handmaidens, her servants, like they're her sisters, but they're still her servants. I mean, there's still a yeah. I and that's good of her that she does try to do that. There is well, that's one saying, of the, like, the redeeming qualities know, of her. Treating, absolutely. treating your your servants like yeah, that's one thing. But 
with Renly. No, and just he sees things. I mean, and he's when Renly's he, a good guy. I'm not denying that. Like he is a good person at in heart. Cause and he, I think he has the wits, and he's seen and been around the politics enough to be a decent king. I'm not saying he's better than Stannis. Stannis is still better. I don't. Think I just he think would he would be, be okay. Decent. I think as a he king. would be too. I think he would be easily, uh, as much as he thinks he knows the politics. I think he'd be easily corralled in court and led and 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 too well, too weak. A too... good king is only as good as his queen, and so don't you I dare suppose turn this I'm around factoring in the fact that he has if the, Marjorie, if he's being swayed, it's by Marjorie and and the queen. No, of no, Thorns. no. Let me explain something to you real quick. So I'm gonna dumb really. This down. You're saying that he's a bad when, king. And You're saying she's a bad queen. Marjorie is actually queen because this title means nothing because Renly is nothing. When and if Marjorie actually becomes queen and my girl will become queen because she slays it. She ain't going to be. It's not going to be about who the king is. It's about my girl, the queen now. Right. So, so you're saying she's going to be right now because he's made, if he was a good king, in order for him to be king, that means that he survives. So she's still his queen. She's a bad queen. You, no, it yep. doesn't mean she, you he lose. survives because so, he doesn't survive. We were doing hypotheticals here. Yeah, and hypothetically, you're wrong. Just like in <laughs> fact, you're See, wrong. He gets such a hot spot with Renly. He's not Renly. Uh, with it's Renly. Marjorie. With, I, like fuck him. <laughs> fuck him. See? He's got not Renly. Literally is a fuck him and the he up. hottest fucking thing in the realm sitting next to him. And like, Loris ain't bad. I get you, dog. But like, come on, bro. So you're speaking of Loris, he gets. Uh, to where it's just him. Loris Brienne, is clearly fl- favored by the the, the, uh, the crowd. Yes. And so there's they're down to four. So I thought, like, it reminded me of, like, the Royal Rumble back in the day when we were <laughs> Where little. it gets down to four. Yeah, and, and it's and the last and four. And two of them team up against two, two of the up, other. Yeah. And they come at uh, Brienne yep. first, the two that aren't uh, Brienne or Loris. And they just get their shit yeah, pushed Brienne in. Yeah, Brienne fucks them up. She up. wrecks them. Loris rides over to the Cobalt Knight, and they trade blows. Loris knocks the weapon from Brienne, and Re- Brienne just jumps at him, and they wrestle, yeah. falling from their horses. Brienne landing on top of him. She flips open his visor, draws a dirk, and holds it to him. And Catelyn can't hear it. Because the, ca- the crowd's losing their shit. It's like the rumble, like Kane and Undertaker just knocked well, each this other is, out this at the is, same time. This is the, uh, this is the heel Winning over the baby face. Right, Everyone right. wanted Loris to win, but now the bad guy is winning. And so, yeah, uh, Catelyn can see through his blood spattered lips that Loris says he yields, and the crowd kind of goes nuts. But the Blue Knight stands up, salutes Renly as Loris, bleeding, is helped from the field, and Catelyn realizes that. He really is only like two years older yeah, than Rob. Yeah, he's a, he's a little kid himself. But probably handsome. It's hard. I to think tell that makes him clean. eighteen. We'll get corrected and yelled at eventually for that. But I think that makes uh, Loris eighteen at this point. So yeah, Renly tells the Blue Knight to come and approach, and as she does, Cat gets a better look at it and realizes that the blue armor looks like shit. Yeah. It is not nearly as nice as Loris's mm-hmm. or half the other knights in there. And voices begin calling out of. Tarth and oddly. A beauty. A beauty. A beauty. And the blue knight knelt. And Renly says, You are all your father claimed. I've seen Loris unhorsed but a few times and never quite like that. And Cat asks, asks Rowan, is who, it? Lord Rowan or uh, Matt? Colin. 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 Oh, yes, Sir yeah, Colin. Because he's that right Colin there, right? Check. Um, I think it's Colin. It's Colin. But you can say Colin because like you're okay. Yeah, you would like. He's Colin. a big butthole. <laughs> he's a big butthole. <laughs> he's been all right. Yeah, no, he's Colin's right. cool. So yeah, she asks Sir Colin, like, who is that knight? Why, why do they? Call- why do they hate him? <laughs> and uh, he explains who she is. That is no man, lady. <laughs> Uh, Brienne of Tarth, daughter to Lord Selwyn. And she's, it says she's horrified. <gasps> okay, All right, Boomer. Boomer Jeez, Louis, like Girls can play uh, sports, man. It's okay. Brienne slays every time. Yeah. So Renly declares Lady Brienne champion and says that he will grant her any boon if it is within his power. And uh, she wants a place in his rainbow guard to give her life for his if need be. And he grants it. Done, I'm telling her to rise, and she does, and she removes her helm, and Cat realizes how ugly this bitch He's really like, is. Yeah, she just Which, immediately understands why. Well, because the first thing I noticed, because she gets pretty brutal, but I'm gonna justify her actions. 
but she she realizes why they call her a beauty, go, noting they're mocking her, yeah. um, just obviously, and goes on to describe her, but she's very brutal about out, how she's describing her and ends with the sentence that you actually told me back a few days ago. Yeah. You finished notes before I did, and... Did you write that one down? I have it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, go I for think. it. So I have to find it then because I thought. Yeah, and finishing her thought about Brienne and how fucking ugly uh, she, she is. She says, Is there any creature on earth as unfortunate as an ugly woman? Yuck, yuck, yuck. Now, I can't, I couldn't at first decide whether this was like Mean Girls Cat. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you, uh, but I no, really. This is sympathetic. It's very much a like, she, exactly. She understands that in this shit world, in this fucked up you world. You gotta have looks and be a high lady. If you're a woman. You have to be attractive, mm-hmm. or else there's nothing for you. Even if you're a farmhand, it does. You can't work. You're just meant to find some gross guy that some neighbor can offer you a pig to fuck. Yeah, and like it's it's terrible. And she just that, and that's what I think I like the most about Brienne's story because we've talked about her before because yeah. she refuses to be a victim of exactly. circumstance she refuses to be this and she unfortunate fights for what ugly she wants. woman yeah no she yeah and that's the same thing with arya exactly. arya is described as ugly horse face right. like she refuses to be this lady that she's supposed to be and that's that's the thing here is like people who are breaking out of their molds in this world while tested and they go through trials they are rewarded for it you know Brienne has some shit ahead of her, Fuck but she, shit. she right here, she has a moment of triumph because Catelyn notes, as Renly cuts away her torn cloak and fastens the rainbow one in her place, Brienne of Tarth does not look the least bit fucking unfortunate. Yeah. Her smile lights up her face. And With pride. The way she looks at the king, Cat notes, is painful to see, but... They, they, and, and I mean this in Arya, I mean this in Danny, the, especially the women characters that don't fit the mold of what they're supposed to do, they are in some ways rewarded. Arya now has these water dancing skills and fucking able to train with Needle. She has right, her own right. sword, Needle, a representation of John and home, something to hold on to physically. D- uh, Brienne gets the rainbow cloak here. Danny gets her silver, gets her dragons, gets Drogo and falls in love with him. There are these little rewards for saying, no, I refuse to listen to what the fuck. Everybody society, else. Especially exactly. men. The, the, this patriarchal society is, is telling me to do. And in breaking that mold, they end up through a lot of hardship. But. It, they're they're getting stronger some for it, yeah, and yeah. and Brienne, uh, like uh, especially with fucking Dance of Dragons, yeah, and what I'm happens tired. with Brienne and that. So, real quick backstory on Brienne. On my first read, and maybe my first reread, I hated. I couldn't stand her stories, her chapters. That I was fucking. I didn't uh, hate her, but uh, I, I, I was yeah, like, what's the point? Like, I don't. I, it bugged. I didn't. I was bored. Yep. And then it just clicked one time, and like she shot to being one of my favorite characters. Her her story is interesting. The the way that I mean, just her whole arc, the the growth, because she she's always in that internal fight of what's right versus what I should be doing. What oaths I've taken? Is this correct or is this against an oath? And it's just always playing on her, mm. and seeing how she works with that is it's it's especially where she's she is so fucking ugly and large and awkward. Yeah, but she makes so much of it that it's it's worth it. It's and so I turned full circle on her, and so it's fun to see her now where we're going through on this level. And seeing that prideful smile here before, you know, what, probably Catelyn's next chapter or two where Renly's going to die. Yeah. I just, I think it's funny where Brienne is sort of the opposite of Tyrion, where, I mean, I guess if she was, if Brienne was a dwarf, it could be worse, but Brienne is sort of ostracized. How is this, well, this is, this is just as bad, if not worse, because yeah, she's, she's a deformed that's, woman. That's what I'm saying, is she's just as ostracized, but with Brienne, there isn't really a concern of Brienne taking a villainous turn. It's only 
is this going to wear her down enough to where she decides, like, I can't protect people? Nah, I'm going to go on a murderous killing spree. Whereas with Tyrion, we're like, yeah, no, he might blow everybody up. and just, Right, he might just yeah. snap and fucking kill everybody. But with Brienne, it's more, no, if anything, she's going to be ground into defeat so much that she's like, I can't protect anyone and I, I refuse See, to stop her, fighting. See, for her, to me, it would be not a going into attack mode. It would be seclusion. She would That's leave it, and go somewhere in yeah, failure. A, a night in exile, uh, a sell me of sorts, but not seeking out a, a new a, king yeah, exactly. or queen. And so I just thought it was an interesting, where she is, she's got the same reasons to hate society that Tyrion does of this always mocking her, always telling her. And yet we don't have any kind and of yet expectations. There's no, of... I mean, there's some, there's some resentment from her, but there's not a bitterness toward the world as a whole. Right. She's still a decent person and doesn't carry a chip around on her shoulder. But Sir Colin <laughs> announces Catelyn to Renly. And... Before I think we get into Renly's introduction, though, I think we'll convene our small council. Oh, I was going to say later, but we can do it now. I think now's sure, a good time. Whatever. Welcome to the small council. What's Thanks up? for hanging out. We just like to, you know, convene this. I like to tell you about how awful Zach is and he treats me terribly and give you social media contact points so that way you can write to me and let me know how much of an asshole he is. Have you ever known someone in your life who just likes to play the victim? Because I do. Me too. Yeah. I play the victim. Yep. <laughs> Indeed you do. Anyway, if you would like to write into this victim or me. For uh, your inductees, for actually. Your inductees. Or just questions, comments, anything to do with Ice Song of Ice and Fire series. You can find us all over the interwebs where the spiders roam deep. Yeah. So our e- uh, we have our website. You should probably. St- Why are there spiders? I don't deep? know. That's that sentence like was spiders. just terrible. That's scary stuff. We have our own website. It's without. Wait, what is it? Brotherhoodwithout.com. I had to, you know, we got so many of them. What do you want from me? We also have our email address where you can email us. <laughs> <laughs> you almost spit your soda out. That would have been cool. We also have our email address. Without manners, brotherhood at gmail.com. Yeah, I'm you- on Twitter at carstark92. Nate is on Twitter at manners without. That is also the Instagram. Uh, you guys can write us anything you want there. Send us some memes. Um, We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash Brotherhood Podcast. We have a private Facebook group available to our patrons who like to give us a couple dollars for some bonus episodes. And that's over at patreon.com slash manners without that one. Sure. Check us out. You know, you'll see our logo. It's over there. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you can find our podcast anywhere you listen to you podcasts. You can rate us, uh, ratethispodcast.com slash brotherhood. We're on YouTube. Search Brotherhood Without Manners. We're on there. All of our episodes, I've got them in nice little organized files by book Give and show. Give us reviews. And, yeah, r- just leave us comments, reviews. Send us in your inductees. We love hearing from you guys. We appreciate everyone who already does write in. We have an inductee or two for this episode, I believe. And so we'll let you guys go get back into that episode so you can find out who the hell Renly Baratheon is right now. I've never been happy. Man, that was a long, small council. It wasn't that long. No, it wasn't. I am beat after such a feast. We had a feast at our small council. Did you eat at the feast? I hate you. All right, fuck you then. I'm so just trying Sir to Colin, fucking bring people into the mood. He just had a nice cleanse. Sir Colin announces <laughs> Cat to Renly, saying that she's here's envoy to her son, Lord of Winterfell. And she comes um, down the stairs and like a little that, bit. Th- this becomes a fucking thing yeah. in this chapter is king correcting. King of and, Winterfell. Uh, king in the North. Lord of Winterfell and King in the North, sir. She corrects him, and Renly is surprised. Our Lady Cat, I'm surprised to see you here, and introduces his queen, Marjorie. And Renly swears that the Lannisters will pay for Ned's murder. What a sweet little girl. And then she offers her condolences. My, I'm so sorry for your loss, my lady. Mm. Like... You'll what? Be sorry for my losses. <laughs> All right, like I will up. murder my whole family All right. for you. You go in the other <laughs> room if you're gonna be fucking pulling. But this yeah, shit. Renly swears the Lannisters will pay when he takes King's Landing. He will send her Cersei's head, and she thinks, "Will that bring Ned back to me?" But 
Yeah. Brienne says that Catelyn should address Renly as your grace. Yeah, because she called him my lord. And it is customary to kneel when approaching a king. And Cat basically is like, Z snaps. well, considering how many motherfuckers are walking around with a crown these days, it really doesn't matter because the difference between Lord and your grace doesn't seem to be anything. Yeah, we have much more pressing matters than titles and honors. And Renly agrees and immediately asks, when does Rob plan on marching on Harrenhal? Yeah. I think that that was a very clever attempt that, like... People, if if it wasn't Catelyn Stark, if it wasn't a Tyrion Lannister or like uh, somebody that knows what the fuck they're doing, he would have just actually got a bunch of information yeah. right there just by slipping. When so when is Rob actually planning on marching? And she's like, I'm not stupid enough. Yeah, yeah. To be Until giving. she knows friend from foe, she's not trusting nobody. With I'm nothing. not invited to his war councils there, so Lord he, Renly. So he asks, what's been done with the the Kingslayer, and. She says that he is currently held prisoner at River Run, and a couple people are. He's, huh? he's alive. What? And Renly says it would seem the direwolf is gentler than the lion, and Lady Oakheart yeah. murmurs, "Gentler than Lannisters is drier than the sea." And I just what the fuck does that mean? I mean, if break you, that down. Literally everything is drier than the sea. Right. So literally everyone Every, yeah, is gentler exactly. than the Lannisters. So I was... Yeah, like. Obviously, the Starks are going to be kinder than these fucking people. Because who isn't? Who isn't? And so then Mr. Randall Tarly speaks Sam's up. dad. And I really like that, because I believe this is his introduction as a an actual speaking character. Um, but we've heard a lot about him at this point. Mm-hmm. And so for people who are paying attention and understand, they already have this bias towards him. No, this guy's a fucking asshole. Like, he treated Sam like right? shit. Yeah, and he's with your king, King Renly. The yeah, one this you good adore. king, the great yeah. fucking... And he speaks up claiming that Rob is weak, a weak move sending his mother to treat where he should be. And Cat shuts him. King the Rob fuck down. is warring, my lord, not playing at tourneys. She replies with icy courtesy. And Renly chuckles. Yeah. he laughs. Did he tell? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Randall Tarly. He says, "I would uh, warn you against." Fighting with this bitch because she's whack. She's like, that was not the quote. <laughs> no, she. He's like he warns him. Like you're you, outmatched. You're here. out of your league here. She is way above you. Don't try. So he says, you know, make sure that Catelyn's men are taken care of and fed. And Catelyn, you can take my pavilion since Lord Caswell has given me use of his castle. And he says, you know, join us for the feast tonight. I fear it will be our last one as Lord Caswell is trying to run us out. And he's like, no, no, I'm not. No, it's fine. But so he, and Renly turns. He, he leads Marjorie off to the castle while Cat is led over to the king's pavilion. So. Yeah. Oh, I was just thinking that it's something I could mention oh. in a bit. Anyway. The pavilion is decked the fuck out with anything and everything she could ever need. And like she thinks yeah. no fucking wonder he's been moving so slow because there's a tub in here. There's. Ben, games, yeah, like, like there's anything you could want. But also, the king's armor is here. Forest green plate polished to a sheen, su- to such a sheen that she could see her reflection. The face of a drowned woman. Can you drown in grief, she wonders. Martin has to know at this point how he plans yeah, on killing he, her. How they plan on dumping her he, body in yeah, the river. Yeah, like in the river after her son is murdered. Like, yeah. he has to know at this point that that's what he's, the direction he's going with them. That's just blatantly like the <coughs> blatantly in your face about the out of the water, drowned in grief. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. She turns away angry with herself that she's kind of having these thoughts. She needs to get ready for the feast. She doesn't have time to be. Yeah, because she, well, when she's looking in at herself, not just that, she sees, she thinks a weak woman, yeah. this old, frail woman, and she's pissed off that she's at her own frailty. Like, and it's once again that, that it's, it's very similar to Cersei in when we start getting Cersei chapters, the if I was a man. Mm-hmm. And so I think her frailty, she she's just very much putting that on her position as, of being a woman. Yeah. There's only so much she thinks she can do, but it's fucked. Yeah. Cat was accompanied to the castle by her highborn companions and the great hall of Lord Caswell's keep 
was great only by courtesy. Yeah, yet. so the High Lords that are with her that we know by name are Wendell Manderley, Lucas Blackwood, Perwin Frey, and then a, a jumble of other ones. Yeah. Um, yet in yeah. this small great hall, room was found for her men, and she was given a place on the da- dais between Lord Mathis Rowan and Sir... John Fossaway. Sir John Fossaway of the Green Apple Fossaways. Yeah, and so Sir John sat on the side making jokes and jests while Sir Mathis uh, asked about his family. Asked then about her the family. Ro- uh, oh, her family. Yeah. I thought it was his family. No, he was asking changed. after her, oh, her, her sons and daughters, and he apologized for Ned. He was being kind. So, and that's... I think important to show the difference between a lot of these houses and what we see with the Lannisters well, and Sansa that's stuff. That's the fun thing is, like, here is Mathis Rowan is of age with Cat. And right. that's important. Yeah, absolutely. Sir John is not. Sir John is one of these knights of summer, right. he's, as Cat will exactly. call them. And so it's very he's you know, how's your family? How have you been? Mm-hmm. They're at war. We are serving opposite kings. Your I hope you're in good health. Yeah. You, like, what? And yeah. that's just to show that they understand that it's it's a war between these high lords. People are serving still. their king. It's not necessarily on an individual level. It's not. I don't hate Lord you Mathis, because Rowan our hates kings. Catelyn Stark because Renly's trying to claim the crown and so is Rob Stark. It's Lord Mathis Rowan is probably tre- treated with Ned Stark or even Catelyn in the Hoster Tully at River Run quite a few times, remembers Cat and is like, oh, yeah, you know. We're at a feast here. We're not currently, you know, Warring preparing at for the battle. Yeah. So, like, how you doing? Brienne of Tarth was seated at the far end of the high table, not dressed as a lady, but as a knight, in her uh, with her new rainbow cape on her back, and no garb could disguise her plainness. And it's clear that Brienne knew and suffered for it. Yeah, and once again, Cat goes a little hard on how she looks, yeah. but, I mean, it's unfortunately Yeah, Kat's shocked accurate. that she's not dressed as a lady. She's in armor and everything. And so, once again, Martin goes into great lengths to detail out the feast Yeah, and I mentioned it in there. the Brain episode. Cat notes that High Garden's clearly not been touched by the yes. war because the rich foods that come out are just fucking insane. And eventually, they make Cat a little queasy, but she couldn't show frailty here, so she... Just eats picks. when she can. She does what she, exactly what Bran yeah. does. One hundred percent. She picks and, and she spends watched all her time. This man who would be king. Yeah. And Renly sat with his young bride on his left and Sir Loris on his right. Loris, as handsome as Cat had expected, was bandaged up now, and he too had a rainbow cloak on. Every now and then, Renly would lean over and feed Marjorie a morsel of food off his dagger or give her the lightest kiss on the cheek. But it was Loris who shared most of his jests and confidences. And clearly the king enjoyed his food and drink. Which I think this is very important. But was not a drunkard yeah. or a glutton. So he liked having a good time, but he wasn't robber. Uh, so I, I was going to say, essentially, what I I suppose I mean to say is that if when Robert took the throne, he acted a little more like this and less yeah. of the glutton, then that's what we see. Would... That's that's the thing. That's the that's the bit of it. That's the it of it. I think Robert was just like this. Yeah, exactly like this. It... Where a guard drops a spear and Robert's like, ha ha ha. Oh, like, for... slap. Yeah. I think this is how Robert started. And but he let the drink like, get the best of him. For some reason, everyone likes to believe that Renly wouldn't be corrupted as Robert was, but. I think he like Catelyn is literally saying he is Robert come again. That's this. Like Robert had this is these how it feasts starts, and yeah. was genial with his men and was feeding his young little bride. And but everyone has their vices. And I mean, for uh, Renly, clearly it would be Loris. Well, that would and be that the, would come the, out well, eventually. That's where and, I think the real difference comes, though. Is Robert didn't turn because he necessarily because he just let the uh, the booze get to him. He lost Lyanna. Well, he and was a broken man. Himself yeah, do- yeah. If Renly doesn't lose Loris, or that doesn't get exposed, or they don't, you know, kill him over that or whatever, then maybe Robert would have continued to be if it was, you know, the woman he loved. If he didn't fucking ruin his life, right? Harping on yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. But, um, but I think it's interesting to see that he. That's probably what Robert, like you said looked like when he was first well, for me, trading and warring. It's sort of Catelyn is sitting there with a checklist and it's not 
oh, he's not a drunkard or a glutton. He's good. It's just he's not these two things. Right. Is he is he a savage like Joffrey? Probably not. No. Cross that off the list. He's, yeah, is exactly. he conniving like Tyrion Lannister? Could be question mark on that one. Like she's just kind of checking. Absolutely, these he's not Robert in the in in the in the drunkardness. He's not a glutton king. Like. She's looking to see how he's going. How what his weaknesses but are. But I still what he think fail it's at. it's this probably was how Robert was when yeah, he was warring and and during his rebellion with his men. Men and speaking of his men, men begin getting fucking ridiculous, drunk, just yeah. shouting on the tables, knocking shit over. Just, Making these outrageous boasts and claims to be the first man to charge into King's Landing and or to slay, slay the mountain, Hound. yeah. And uh, it, it's just it, it, a fool ends up coming out chasing a dwarf around and making the, a show. Yeah, of so it. the fool is dressed like Jamie Lannister, yeah. and the dwarf like Tyrion, and the, the Kinslayer. Yeah, he makes a, a stupid joke, which Renly corrects to you know the applause and cheers yeah, of the the crowd. Laughs. Lord Rowan did not join in, and he just notes that they are all so young. They are all so young. Yeah, and Cat uh, in her internal monologuing agrees 100% that half of these kids weren't even born like Loris wasn't born or if he was he was like two when when Rhaegar died yep. and m- the rest of them were just boys during the Greyjoy rebellion barely remembering that even being a yeah, thing. Yeah they're all unblooded. They're drunk on the chance for glory and honor and you know the chance to prove themselves. It's all still a game to them. Attor- yeah. Attorney writ large. And I so like. she says to, to Rowan War will make them old, as it did us. I pity them. And he asks why. Look, look at them. They are they are full of life and love and lust. And tonight, many a bastard will be born. They're they're fucking loving it. They're. And she says, because it will not last, because they are the knights of summer, and winter is coming. Lady Catelyn, <laughs> you are wrong. Brienne of Tarth regarded her. Winter will never come for the likes of us. Should we die in battle, they will surely sing of us, and it is always summer in the songs. In songs, all knights are gallant, all maids are beautiful, and the sun is always shining. Now, I have a lot to say about this. Yeah, part, this actually. is an intri- so, very, very interesting. While it's a very accurate thing, if we die in battle, we, we it's live always on in summer. Songs. Yeah. But of all the things that could happen in her line, the one thing that does with Renly dying by this shadow beast, that will not live on in these happy summer songs. No. Like your it was a your fucking your winter is coming very soon, as Kat says. I but, also like the all maids are beautiful. So the next thing that yeah, the like all maids she, are beautiful. She, if she dies in battle, she will be Brienne the Beauty. Right. I also think it's interesting, and it made me think that maybe the reason Kat ends up very much so on board with Brienne is Brienne is basically badass Sansa. Mm -hmm. She's very... Lost in that dreamy, songy, like the maids. She and knows maidens. what the world is, but she wishes it was more like the songs. Yeah, yeah. And so I think that was interesting. I never realized that until, like, especially right here, so early on. And the last point on it is you know where else it is always summer? Under the sea. Um, I know, I know. I know, I know. Oh, oh, oh. And so winter comes for us all, Cat thinks. For me, it came when Ned died. It will come for you too, child, sooner than you like. But uh, Renly ends up saving yeah. her here and asks if Lady Le- Catelyn, jo- will you join me for a walk? And a nice little trot around the grounds. Uh, and walk. Brienne immediately is like, my king, give me a second. I'll, I'll put my armor on. And he says, and I wrote this quote specifically, if I am not safe in the heart of Lord Caswell's castle with my own host around me, one sword will make no matter. Not even your sword, Brienne. Dude. There's Renly's death right there. Holy shit. And that's, he's not, like, that's it, is if I'm not safe with all of you around me, clearly it's some fucking magic that's something, killing me. Yeah. Something that we couldn't have stopped no matter how hard we try. And that's what it is. Melisandre sends a vagina baby demon <laughs> after shadow him. shadow monster. And... It kills him, and no one. I have to believe if Brienne saw it and tried to swing at it, it wouldn't have affected. Wouldn't it. do it anything. It would have fucking, unless she had maybe Valerian steel or something. Like, 
But who knows? I, yeah. yeah. And but so he says his it, death it, right yeah, there. It it's wouldn't crazy. Matt, Brian, you being here won't save me. <laughs> You'll just watch me die. Eventually. Exactly. His words seem to strike the girl hard as she kind of sits there. Harder than any blow she had taken yeah, that afternoon. And I just, I really like that that's showing her character already. We're learning that, like, she truly loves this man, wants to protect him, and to think that there's anything that could possibly. And this is her, this is her first time getting that chance like this right. is their first chance for guard duty and yeah, like exactly. he's like yeah no we're good thanks like oh fuck so renly leads catlin out and they begin ascending up a, a tower some steps and he asks her is sir barristan with rob at river run which catches her off guard because she's like um uh, i i'm is pretty sure barristan selmy is protecting as lord and commander renly tells her no no he they they dismissed him the fools he they told him he was too old he left King's Landing vowing to take up service with the true king. I had, uh, he said, uh, Brienne's cloak, the one that she received today, was the one I was holding out for for Selmy. Uh, when he hadn't shown up, I had hoped he might find me on the road, and when he didn't, I thought maybe he had taken up with Rob at River Run. He was an old man, yes, but a good man still, and I hope he has come to no harm. The Lannisters are great fools. Yeah, so once again, as, as much as I know you get off on yelling at how terrible of a king he makes. I like Renly as a person just because he's still like, well, what, you know, I, I was at least hoping he went to you guys there at the north, like, because he is a good dude. Like, Are you ready Barristan. for me to turn this into a reason I hate Renly? Yeah, go ahead. Because, so Brienne's cloak means nothing. It was meant to be, like... It's not even yours. Yeah, it's not Brienne's. Yeah, like, yeah. So, like, he f- totally is fucking her. Yeah, I mean, it was basically, and, like, a, yeah, sure, since and, you won. And, and, like, yeah, exactly that. And if it was really meant for Selmy, he should have held it. That position shouldn't have been filled. If that's what it was, if it was the held cloak for the esteemed barrister in the bold, he shouldn't have given it out, plain and fucking simple. Like, you instead gave... Selmy's cloak to Brienne, and it means nothing to you but everything to her, and we just saw that played out. And, like, so, one, you're just giving up on the fact that Selmy's going to, you know, come to you, which stand true to your convictions, Yeah, I suppose this all does like, kind of show that everything he does is very surface it's wish, level. It's, wish, it's wishy-washy it's bullshit. It's very for... It's vanity. Exactly. And it's like, very to make sure... It's for the perception that he's this yeah, person. Yeah, like, that That to me wasn't a cool moment. That was like a... You, one, didn't stand by your convictions of holding on to it for Selma. No, because I noted that she two, just kind of... Oh, well, technically that was for Barristan, but I gave it to her. Like, I didn't yeah, know that that was just, just a side thing. Gave, like, okay, yeah, Brienne asked anybody. But I suppose me. that... That kind of could have been a, I apologize, but this is held for the I'm Lord sorry, Commander, yeah. Lord Selmy, for when he chooses to you know, retake I will, his command. You know, like, he's so willing to change the formula. I will make you my eighth. I will get you a new exactly. cloak made. How hard is that to do? But Done. the seventh is for But the Barristan seventh is for Sir Barristan Selmy, should he choose the honor of joining my Kingsguard. Bullshit. Fuck Renly. <laughs> and so Renly offers her, uh, tells her that he had, that night he had offered Ned 100 swords. And Catelyn says he refused you. She didn't need to be told. Like, yeah. he wasn't going to fight you or fight with you against Stannis. Stannis is the true king. Well, because he, he says first, I was going to, I offered him the 100 swords to take Joffrey mm-hmm. and hold him up. And be, and then if, if he had listened, Ned would be regent right now, not queen. And there wouldn't be any problems. And he refused. He you. refused. So I had to flee or else I would have been at risk in dying too. Had you stayed and lent your support to Ned, he might still be alive, Cat thinks bitterly. But they reach the top of the tower at this point and he, they can see. I don't necessarily think that that's actually accurate. What? Like, yeah, sure, it might have helped a little bit of friendly. Oh, no, I I I don't think. This is her being angry. Bitter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I. They reach the top of the tower and they can see in all directions and the camp is fucking massive. And Renly gets a little savage and starts yeah. getting into numbers. And he says, so I estimate Rob has, what, 40,000 men? And, At River Run there? And Kat's, like, not nearly so many. Thinking to herself, nope. yeah. She's like, holy shit, not even. We've taken losses. People have left to go and hold their shit. Like, and not Renly's even close. And like, yeah, so I've got these men here. I've also got men at Highgarden, Storm's End. Soon the Dornish will be joining me. And then don't forget Stannis at Dragonstone. And Kat says, it would seem that you are the one who has forgotten Stannis. She says, sharper than she intended. And he laughs. Your claim, his claim, you mean. He said, Stannis would make an appalling king, nor is he like to become one. 
Men respect Stannis, even fear him, but few enough love him. And she says, well, he's still your elder. So, yeah. So now that, a claim. Now that I've played devil's advocate for the whole episode, uh, the one true king they're talking about here, the one who actually has a Stannis, claim, yeah. um, he he's basically saying, Renly, that he goes through and says, "My see, see the men out there? That's my claim. What, what claim did Robert have? He that won he, it, he won it he, with his Warhammer. And so that right there, and I thought actually for some reason as I was reading it, when he said, that's my claim, I thought he was going to point out to the army and say, that's my Warhammer. Mm. That's my claim to the throne. Yeah, no, like, I, he I'm sweeps his it. hand to the armies around him and says, there is my claim. As good as Robert's ever was, like, I have a big army. That's exactly. my claim. That's my claim to the throne. And he says, uh, if your son is as loyal to me as Ned was to Robert, he will be well rewarded for it. Uh, I'll allow him to keep his lands and titles. He can even go on calling himself King in the North. But I will have his so- service, honor, and loyalty. And fealty. And fealty. And she says, and if he won't, my lord. And Renly basically tells her he's going to regret it. I mean he- to be king, my lady, and not of a broken kingdom. Uh, he say, he brings up Torrin Stark kneeling yeah, before exactly. Aegon, and he says, that was wise. Your son must be wise now. Once, <laughs> once we join forces, this war is as good as done. And, and then he gets interrupted by the porcelis raising. And a uh, rider lowering, coming in, shouting. Shouting for the king. The British so, are coming. The Brit- oh, no, yeah. no. King, king Renly. And, and Renly jumps up. I'm here, sir. I'm up here. I'm up here, sir. Can you not see me? I just picture <sighs> like a, a Shakespeare scene. It's yeah. One and light through yonder window breaks. Yeah, pretty much. And the uh, yeah, Renly with like Captain Morganing it on yeah. like one foot on the parapet. And so this rider shouts up. There's, I ride from Storm's End. We're under siege. And he's like, that's not po- the Lannisters couldn't possibly. What? I didn't say anything of Haven Hall. Yeah, well, hold I mean, on a minute, Mitch. Uh, and he says it's 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 your it's Lord Stannis, but he's claiming King Stannis now. Dun dun dun. So my big question is, how the fuck did Renly not see this coming? All wise and powerful eyes of bullshit. Because he's a terrible leader and yeah. ruler that doesn't yeah. know how to see yeah. anything. Right? I literally, it's hard for me. Like I understand the Renly is a good character as written, and I will never say that there is a bad. I understand the people that claim that he would be a good. It, it's a it's a fallacy. He he. It's a game for him. He doesn't no, understand he wants the, the weight power, of what he is doing, and he wants, and not just the, and not for the power. He wants it so that he can afford to live the as Dornish, lavish. The Dornish men are coming on my side. Like, where the fuck did you get that idea? Yeah, the Dornish men have fucking hated Highgarden right. and and Storms and like the Dornish men. Fuck off, Renly. <laughs> Fuck off, dude. Fucking Stannis is here. Thank God. Good anyway, goodness. God, I love Cat, though. So your inductees, Renly? Well, no. Uh, I also, just the last point, is it's Cat is one of the best. It's either Cat or Tyrion that needed to be here yeah. to deal with Renly. To point out to us how fucking stupid. Stupid, Renly. Well, that's is. it. Because, like I said, he doesn't want to rule for the power or for the good of the kingdom. He wants to be able to live a lavish lifestyle. He wants to live elegantly. His and have claim fun. is my brother rebelled to take the throne. Exactly. Like, there is no longevity. Stannis is doing it because there's laws in place now. Yes, I understand what Renly is saying, but Robert rebelled because the Targaryens acted against the Starks. A bunch All of other people. fucking houses they that were he just was doing loyal terrible to, shit. Yeah. and then kidnapped his betrothed. That is why Robert started a war. Renly's starting a war because Ned Stark went into the King's Landing, stirred up some shit, and then Robert died. And fucking Renly was like, yeah, no, I'll be king. Sure. That's not the way it fucking works, Well, my bro. brother did it. I can do it. My brother did it by... In a just uh, quote-unquote Your brother did way. it in attacking an, what was supposedly an unjust king to him. Right. Stannis, isn't if you're unjust. following the law, Stannis should be the king, and Stannis isn't unjust. Yeah, like, Renly's just making up his own Renly's rules. Renly's just making up bullshit, so fuck you. Yeah, uh, we know. My we inductee. Know. Uh, shit. Um, fuck, I had it. God damn it. All right, well, then I'll go. Yeah, you I'm go. giving my... Oh, it's uh, Rowan. Mathis Rowan. Mathis Rowan. Yeah, uh, I really liked that moment of the feast where it kind yeah, of pulls young. back to him and Kat, and they're just like, like, like he kind of gets it, but 
He's also... It's ooh, very cool so that little... they're on opposite sides of like the war. It's almost like you could see this split down the middle mm-hmm. of the table, and they're both sitting on either side of it, but just having this adult conversation. And where they've both come from, where this has been the entirety of the war for Mathis Rowan and Renly's host is just attorneys. And yeah, movie. yeah. And Cat has come from Whispering Wood. Right. And King's Landing and dealing with Ned and all this different shit. And so, yeah, I just, I liked that conversation with Mathis Rowan and I think it was a good reflection of Cat, of another High Lord who is sort of separate from it all and just getting some thoughts of that where Starks, Lannisters, like, they may not just be inherently hated on other sides of, yeah. of, of the opposition. So, it's cool. Martin's writing style. Mwah. Art. Word. Anyway, you're inductee. Uh, I'm giving mine to Shad. Shad! Yeah, because he's been up, he's all the way up from Winterfell. Or all the way down from Winterfell. And, and he's And he's keeping his, his head on his fucking shoulders. He's not like, we're not going crazy. Like, you want some, you want some breakfast? You want some hey, tea? Hey, you want some breakfast? Hey, you want some breakfast? You want some tea? And you need some tea, girl. I got yeah, you. Yeah, he just it's nice herbal, nice and simple stuff. Keep Chamomile, it fucking... and yeah, he's just remaining loyal, doing his duty. Yeah. He's Shad. keeping her safe. So I'm bringing Chad in all the way from Winterfell. Shadrick, the Mad Mouse. And I, no, the... different Chad. Oh shit, different, different Chad. Different Chad. So those are our inductees. We did get one from, and you know what? I've been reading a lot of Julian's. Our inductees. favorite French fry, yeah. Julian. So Nate's gonna read Julian's inductee. I'm just gonna read it as is. I'm, I'm going for it now. Ew. Now, that's an interesting chapter, as engaging as any usual Catelyn's chapter. I really liked diving into the psychology of Brienne and Renly. And what a pleasant description of Loras we get. That's really nice. Yeah. And wow, what? Stannis sieging Storm's End? Fuck yeah. Awesome. I love how the whole Dragonstone situation was kept silent, though. Those different last chapters after Davos won. Now the element of surprise totally works. As for my inductee, I've had plenty of ideas, as you have, I'm sure. I'm picking Renly. As Robert come again, he has got the king looks and charisma. From what we read, at least 100k men are pretty okay to follow the man and support an obviously far-fetched claim. I think you saved yourself with that last line. Zach was ready to rage. His face was red. He was steaming out the ears. So he must not be that bad. The TV show had him pictured a bit candid and useless, but Book Renly looks like he'd make a great king in the end. Valor de Harris. Julian, <laughs> thank you for writing in. I love your inductee because the look on Zach's face right now is so... So wonderful. We are all entitled to our own opinions, <laughs> and I respect yours. You think Renly would make a good king, and that is okay. Um, please tell me why, legitimately, why do you think Renly would make a good king uh, in your next email to us? It Let doesn't us matter. I've tried offering any kind of support. I, Zach will make up anything it's to not make this guy. Up. <laughs> If you could give me some fucking fact as to why this guy would make a good king, as opposed to just... He treats his men well and they're feasting because that's that's Robert did that too. That yeah, but we the thing is is that because he dies so early, we never get the opportunity to see him actually rule appropriately. Good. Yes, <laughs> and so G- good. It is always going to be speculation, and so there's not any actual evidence to provide to support. If this that little claim. shit didn't make this claim, <laughs> Stannis would have these men. <laughs> if Stannis and then Rob Stark were able to come to terms, done. Fucking up. <laughs> That's what we a don't want. I do want. Well, I don't want because I want B, a million books. But Rob absolutely would support Stannis. I'm aware, claim. and so it I would know. just be it's it, fucking open and I shut mean, case. Don't get me wrong; it would be fucking sick to just see Stannis with the entire with six Stark kingdoms, in his hand? just and, and like Renly and all of Highgarden like, and Storm's End, all the might of everywhere but Casterly Rock. Maybe then Barristan wouldn't have left the fucking country. Like I'm, I'm with Barristan. So you're Get saying, me on a flight all right? The fuck so out of here. we are now at the we have arrived to where Zach is claiming that Barristan fled the country because of Renly Baratheon. Yep, it's of Renly's claim. fault. That's that yeah. No, he was me. sitting. He was sitting in it because he snuck back into King's Landing. He was sitting at a tavern. He was having a drink and he was like, "Where fuck can this. I go?" And fuck he was like, Renly. "No, that little fucking turd just fractured the whole kingdom." Stannis isn't gonna have the full support he needs, which means Rob Stark isn't gonna fucking support Renly's dumbass. So then the Red Wedding's gonna happen. Yo, so that the I red wedding those, is Renly's fault. I think those fault. Targaryen kids are still alive. I'm going to go find them. Cool. Dudes. I need a uh, one-way ticket awesome. to Ontario. Awesome. So Renly caused Ontario the red wedding. Ontario is in Essos. Then fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. 
Hey, Ari, aren't you off Are you near Ontario? That's where Marison's coming in. Anyway, thank you for your inductee, Julian. Yeah, we thank absolutely you guys love for it. Appreciate writing it. and listening. Uh, those Next. are our thoughts on Catlin 3. Next, we're going to be reading John 3. So send us in your inductees for that. Followed by what? Theon 2? Theon 2, I think. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, a few others are coming. I think Tyrion and Arya Tyrion again. And, Arya. and then finally, another Danny chapter. But yeah, get but... us inductees in for John 3 and uh, Theon 2. Yeah, it's going to be uh, good stuff. Yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Valor de Harris. Peace.